guys, it's your girl, Fairy. Uh, I look like absolute garbage today, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> but I really wanted to film this video uh, while it was still fresh in my mind and also while my roommate is not here and she just left for something. Um, so this is my, my best chance, excuse my laptop in the background, I am watching Chagi Conroy's Okami Let's Play for the fifth time! Today I am going to be discussing my experience competing in Anime Milwaukee's uh, 2018 Masquerade or Cosplay Contest. I really wanted to share my experience because hopefully somebody from staff will see this video um, and kind of realize maybe how disorganized their convention can be. Um, I just want to like, say a disclaimer that the purpose of this video is not to um, slander Anime Milwaukee or say that um, they're an awful con or that I don't support them. Um, I think that the staff are really kind, the, the people that I met mostly were really kind, um, and I think that they're really trying to put on a really good convention for their attendees, but I do think that some things could be fixed, so I did just want to share this experience with you guys today. So this is going to be kind of a long video, more like a story time than like anything else, so um, I know I've done a lot of like just sitting down and talking videos lately, I'm sorry if you guys don't like that. Um, so today is February 21st, um, so Amki was just a couple of days ago, so like I said, this is still like fresh in my mind. So I'm going to start from the very beginning. So um, I was competing, um, not like with my friend as a like uh, group costume, but we were both competing in the same division and like we were at the con together. So um, her name is Mallory and we decided that we were going to go to the like cosplay headquarters because she had signed up online for the masquerade ahead of time but I had not so I still had to register for it. So her and I head down to like the little cosplay area room thing. It was like right by where they have the cosplay meetups. If you guys have ever been to Amki, it's in that like atrium area with the weird like palm trees happening. I don't know. So we show up. I don't exactly remember what time it was. Uh, I know at this point we had gotten our badges and it was Friday so I think it was around three-ish? Maybe four? Um, but it was between three and four, I know, on Friday. We walked in and the head of cosplay, um, she was a woman, I don't know what her name is, she didn't introduce herself, which like totally fine, I know I staff a convention and I don't introduce myself necessarily to every single person I meet, but as we walked in, um, she was actually on the phone um, and I don't know what it was about, but she was talking on her cell phone with somebody and she kind of just gave us the like one, one minute finger and we were like, okay, cool. There was somebody else sitting at the table. I don't know what their purpose was, but they were sitting there with her. Um, I assume it was not their job to schedule the cosplay masquerade because they didn't offer to help us with anything, which is totally fine. Um, I understand that like not everybody's job is uh, going to help you. So she was on the phone for quite a while. It was like several minutes, and after a little bit, like I kind of. I felt like at that point I was like, is it really that important? It sounded like it was something convention related, so I'm not trying to say that she shouldn't have been on the phone, um, but it was kind of, it almost came off as a little bit rude just because like she just kind of like crankily gave us the like one minute finger glare. Um, at this point, a couple of other contestants had come up behind us, so there was beginning, a line was beginning to form. So she finally gets off the phone, and instead of acknowledging us, um, Mallory and I, and like apologizing and saying like, oh sorry, I was just dealing with something, she just like instantly goes to typing on her computer and talking to the un other attendant at the booth, and it kind of came across as though she was like completely ignoring us. Again, I understand she was busy dealing with issues or whatever arises at a con, I get that. Again, I, I work for a convention as well, I actually um, run No Brand Cons cosplay contest, so like I know... The cosplay contest can be a little bit disorganized, but it did come across as, across as a little bit rude. So she's typing and typing and like doing all this printing. Um, I guess she was printing out a schedule for prejudging that like for some reason had not been printed out until almost five o'clock on Friday. Um, and I believe that the cosplay registration opened at like noon on Friday, so they'd been going for like five hours without actually having a sheet for their prejudging. So she pulls out a sheet that's like completely handwritten in somebody's really messy handwriting. She finally starts talking to us and she's like, hey, like, are you guys here for the masquerade? And we were like, yeah, um, she just needs to check in and then I need to register. So Mal she starts checking in Mallory and she's all set to go, obviously, because she already filled out her form online. Um, so she asked Mal when 
um, she wants to do her prejudging, and Mallory asked for something around noon. And because the sheet was only handwritten, she like didn't know what slots she already had, so she kind of just guessed and was like, oh, that looks like it's 11.50, so like I think we have an 11.40 open, but we're not really sure. Are we doing 10 minute time slots, or are we doing 5 minutes, or are they 15? Like. It just came across like they really didn't know what was going on. And like, I really, really don't want to offend any Amkey staff, like I completely understand, but as somebody who also runs a cosplay contest, granted, I run a cosplay contest on a much smaller scale than Amkey does, but I feel like it's not that hard to print stuff out beforehand and write names in. Um, so to me it kind of just came across as like, mm, they really don't know what they're doing, do they? So Mallory and I got prejudging spots. Mine was at 11.45 and Mallory's was at 11.40. Um, they said they were doing 10 minute time slots, but they just put me in at 11.45 anyway because the, the woman's reasoning was that they always run behind anyway. Um, which again kind of just gave the impression of unprofessionalism and almost like she wasn't even gonna try to have the cosplay judging run on time. So we got our pre-judging times um, and we were done for Friday with the cosplay contest. So on Saturday we show up to the same room as we were told um, and they checked us in, they like highlighted our names on their little sheet and we kind of stood in line outside of the judging room to wait to get judged. On Saturday it's also important to note that one of my very good friends Erin was helping judge Anime Milwaukee's. She was helping judge Anime Milwaukee's Milwaukee's uh, hallway masquerade and if you don't know what a hallway masquerade is it's basically a cosplay competition for people that would rather not get on stage or maybe they made a little bit less of their costume and they can't really compete in the main masquerade. It's not the same as an exhibition where you can buy your whole costume and just go on stage and compete. In the hallway masquerade you don't go on stage at all unless you like win something and they give you a certificate at the masquerade. So Erin had won best in, best in show last year so they did ask her to um, help with the judging of the hallway masquerade this year. So she was there from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. I promise that's relevant to the story, um, but yeah, so we we go in, Mallory goes in before me, gets judged, comes out. Um, I also go in and get judged. Um, I'm wearing my Madoka Kaname cosplay. Uh, I don't have any like nice pictures of it, so here's one of me on stage that my friend took. Um, but when I went in, there were only two judges, and I normally there's at least three, so that there's no there's no tie going on. Um, and there was a third chair and like stuff there. I later found out that um, uh, the person that was missing was moderately okay cosplay, who I adore. I love him a lot, um, but I think that he actually had a panel or something during the judging time. I don't remember. There were two other judges there. Um, one of them I'm not gonna name because like I don't want to like slander him or anything, because um, I don't think he's a bad person. I just got an interesting vibe from him this whole weekend. And the other person was a girl and I actually don't remember her name. I like recognized who it was but I can't remember what her cosplay handle is. But I went in for judging and I um, I hadn't really planned on competing before the con so I just like slid them a reference picture on my phone um, and kind of talked through my costume. The girl that was sitting in the middle seat was very engaged and was kind of nodding after all the things I said and she like actually put her hands on my costume and like looked at my seams and made sure everything was nice. Um, but the other guy who was there that I'm again not going to name was kind of sitting there like resting his elbow on the table and like leaning his face on his hand and he just looked really disinterested and it was kind of disheartening um, but it sounded like it was like that for everybody it wasn't just me again this like a cons guests don't necessarily reflect the staff of the convention but um, this cosplayer's actions during judging um, gave a very unprofessional vibe. The judges didn't ask any questions about my costume, which if you guys have never competed before, um, judges asking you questions is pretty common. They usually just want to know more about your procedures and what kind of techniques you used in your costume, and they didn't ask me anything. So I finished with judging, and the judges told me that at 4 o'clock on Saturday I had to be at main programming so they could let us in and get us all in order to go on stage and kind of give us instructions from there. So. This kind of conflicted with something that I already knew. I had read online when I was looking at applying online um, that you were supposed to be at main programming at 4.30 um, and it also said that in the program guide I believe there was somewhere else that it was written that we had to be at main events at 4.30 but the judges told us 4 um, so I made sure to be there by 4 o'clock. So I show up at main programming at 4 o'clock um, and there's not a ton of other people there so I'm just kind of chilling out. Mallory shows up. Um, and then most of the other contestants kind of roll in gradually. While we're sitting there, we notice that Erin is there. Um, and like I said, she had been judging the hallway masquerade all day. She looked absolutely exhausted. Um, so she came over to us 
and we were like, hey, you know, how was your day? Uh, how was the hallway masquerade? And she just gave us this look. Like, I, she has a certain face for when she's very, um, distressed. <laughs> and she said, you guys would not believe the kind of day I just had. And I was like, oh, girl, uh-oh. <laughs> So again, this is not anything to slander Amki, um, but this is just what I heard from somebody who participated in judging. So that day, Erin came with us to lunch when we went to get lunch in the mall. It was around like 12 something, and she just kind of like shoveled her food down and was like, okay, I gotta go back to judging. I don't really know how long I can be gone for. So she told us that when she got back from eating lunch, the uh, judges for the actual masquerade, like the guest judges that are being paid to be there, had disappeared. Um, and the con staff didn't really know where anybody was. So like I said, I think one of them, Aaron had said one of them uh, had a panel, one of them was told that they had to be somewhere, but it actually wasn't correct, and then the third judge, they didn't know where the judge had gone. So that meant that the actual masquerade, not the hallway masquerade, the actual masquerade, where people are paid to judge it, there were no judges for. So the head of cosplay, when Aaron came back, was like, oh, thank goodness you're here. We need somebody that's qualified, or at least slightly qualified, to judge the actual masquerade. Another side note is that um, there were three judges for the hallway masquerade. Um, Aaron has extensive sewing experience and she's competed a lot of times, but the other two, one of them had never made a costume, I think, and the other one had made some costumes but had never competed. So Aaron was really the only one that was qualified to judge anything. So for a couple of contestants, Erin was actually judging the actual masquerade, which I love Erin dearly, but she's not qualified to judge a masquerade. So eventually, I think at least one of the judges showed back up and she said that she was just instructed to give them her judging sheets and then when people went on stage they would the actual judges would be able to make a more sound decision based on Aaron's judging comments and what the judges can see on stage. For me that just set off a lot of alarm bells and red flags in my mind because I feel like at a con um, you should First of all, you should know where your guests are pretty much all the time, especially like if they have something that they need to be at. But second of all, if you're scheduling a cosplay contest and you need people to judge, we usually organize their panels to not be during their judging time because they kind of need to be there for judging for the whole time period. So I don't really know what was happening with Amkey's scheduling, um, but it seems like they had a couple of things that will need to be looked at in the future. Read not scheduling judges for panels while they're supposed to be judging. <laughs> so like I said, we got the at 4 and I thought we were supposed to be there at 4 30 but we got there at 4 anyway and Erin was like well why are you guys here so early and we told her that we were told to be here at 4 o'clock and she said she heard that we weren't supposed to be there until 5 o'clock so she was right um, the judges had told everybody that we had to be there at 4 the program guide said 4 30 but actually they wanted us to be there at 5 I don't have my shoes here anymore but for my Monica cosplay she has like heels on that are kind of tall, they're not awful, but like they're kind of tall and I'd been walking around all day and I was starting to get blisters on my toes. I could feel it happening. They're awful. They're still healing. Um, they're probably some of the worst like foot wounds I've had from a con in a long time. So I'm like standing outside of main events. I did take some breaks sitting down to give my feet a rest, um, but just the fact that they had told us to be there so early and then I was just standing for the whole time. So around 5 they finally let us into main events and the MC started sorting us um, into our order that we needed to go in to go on stage. If you guys don't know, they usually sort by category and in those categories they sort by your judging time. So if you had an earlier judging time, you go like first, second, third. If you had a later judging time, you go towards the end. Or that's usually how it goes. It doesn't have to go that way. And again, at most cons what they do if they don't have a green room, um, which a green room is like a separate room that they put you in, um, but at my con, no brand con, and at Amkey, they don't have a side room for contestants to go in, so they sit you in a specific seating area only for contestants, and they seat you in order, so they can take you in a row, take you backstage, you all go across stage, all that stuff. Instead of taking us to where we were actually going to be seated, the MC that was lining us up just kind of let us all file in. And keep in mind, there's like a good amount of contestants. There's, I don't know how many people there are, I'm really bad at estimating, but there are probably at least like 60 people. And we're all kind of spread out and chatting, and he was trying to like announce who was supposed to be next in line. And then we ended up just making this really long line. Um, and then the main events guy wanted to take us on a walking tour of how we're going to be going across the stage. And we didn't actually sit down until like 5.30, 5.45, which again, my feet were bleeding in my shoes. And standing in that huge Madoka skirt 
and those painful shoes for that long was not great and I know there were a ton of other people there that had way bulkier costumes than I did that weighed a lot more so I can't imagine how cumbersome it must have been for them to get around. So after taking a tour of the stage and getting questions asked and all that kind of stuff we finally sit down in our like assigned seating. At this point pretty much all of the contestants were extremely frustrated. Um, I was an intermediate so I was sitting between beginner and advanced. Um, advanced is also known as masters in most other cons, but for some reason Amki calls it advanced. There was only one row of intermediate and there were four people cosplaying in masters, which is very small. So we're all kind of chatting with each other and like kind of mutually complaining. Um, I think at this point everybody was really frustrated with the judging process, how long it took for them to line us up, um, and just the whole process of getting seated was very like overly complicated for no reason. So we were all kind of lamenting and it sounded like a lot of people didn't want to compete at Amki again. I know personally, until Amki gets their act together more, I don't really want to compete there ever again. <laughs> so the masquerade comes and goes, we all go on stage, everything's fine. That's like probably the only part that actually runs smoothly. I think they actually started roughly on time. They got everybody on stage just fine. And then we went into the intermission, which was done by their events or their main programming head Webby, as well as Samurai Dan and Jillian. I do always feel like Amkey's intermission is very long. I don't know if that's just me, um, <laughs> but it always feels way, way too long. Um, but I felt like this year it was a little bit better than the past times I've competed at Amkey. So anyway, we finally get to awards, um, and they award the hallway masquerade winners and they say that the winners of the hallway masquerade get a free badge for next year and I'm like okay cool and they don't really specify if the winners of the actual masquerade get a free badge for next year because I feel like that makes more sense to me that the actual masquerade winners would get a free badge so I actually got third place in uh, intermediate walk-ons I was super flattered um, they had us all go up on stage and we all like had to stay on stage and I was in the second category called so I had to sit through at all the rest of the categories which is like a lot um, and like I said my feet were really hurting so standing on stage for that long was not awesome but we're all standing there with our certificates uh, we all get a group picture together and then the main events had Webby says everybody except for the con contestants and staff need to leave so they can start sitting up setting up for the dance so all the contestants that won are on stage like oh yeah cool congrats we're all kind of chatting um, one of the best moments of my life ever happened moderately okay cosplay uh, was talking to me and he was like, yeah, I'm sorry I wasn't there for judging, um, but I think you look fucking awesome, and I screamed. I I really look up to moderately okay, so hearing that from him was very, very cool. But we're all kind of milling around. I'm like talking to my friends, and I'm like, um, I think they, I think they want us to stick around. I don't know what for. A lot of times cons will have you go backstage and they'll give you like a free poster or like a free wristband or something. The first time I competed at Amki, we got like a free anime DVD, but they're not like telling us to go backstage or anything, so we're all kind of standing around and not sh every I'm like talking to all the contestants and I'm like do you guys know what we're supposed to do like do we have to go backstage do they need anything from us do we get a free badge and then the main events guy was like all right everybody leave and I was like okay so I'm not sure like if we were supposed to do anything I don't know if the actual masquerade winners were supposed to get a free pass for next year I don't know what is happening but yeah um, needless to say the masquerade left me feeling really frustrated I was really happy that I placed but I just, I felt so drained afterwards that I was like, is this even worth it? So that was my experience this year at Anime Milwaukee's Masquerade. I feel like they have a lot that they can improve on. Again, this is not meant to bash or slander Anime Milwaukee or their staff or guests. I just wanted to share the kind of experience I had so maybe the staff or, you know, whoever watches this can get an idea of what their masquerade was like and maybe other people that participated can complain with me or those of you that didn't go to Amki can just get some sort of enjoyment out of this. You will notice that my videos are no longer monetized. YouTube's partnership program ended for me just today on the 21st. Um, so I am going to work hard this year to try to grow my audience more and get that partnership back. If you guys want to know more about why I'm no longer eligible for um, ads on my videos, I did make a whole video about it that I can link in the little i card up there, so you guys can check that out if you want. But I still appreciate all of your guys' support despite despite this ad stuff going on. Like I said, I'm not in YouTube for the money, so I'm using this as a motivation to put more effort into my channel and to work on growing it more this year. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!